Hello, this is Kim with Standing on Solid Ground. I am your host of this motivational and inspirational podcast. And my son and I, Xavier, have been working diligently trying to think of uh, better ways to better produce and get things out in a more timely manner with he working and going to school and then myself working full-time job. It has been a challenge. But you know, God comes first no matter what. I don't care how challenging it may be. I don't care how often uh, I may find myself in a position where I'm like, oh no, I need to get this together. I need to get this together. It is important for me. I have already incorporated in my life this podcast. I have already placed it in the midst of everything that I do. It doesn't matter if I'm cooking. It doesn't matter if I'm doing dishes or laundry or whatever I am working on. This podcast is my number one priority. And I have been doing mostly audio. And the reasons why I do audio is because it's not about me. It's about Christ. It is about who he is and what he is for our lives and why he is so important for our lives. And so I do the audio because it's not about me. It's not about seeing my face. It's not about making myself important. It is about Christ and he is number one. He is the priority in this podcast and so when i do the videos i'm nervous about doing videos because i know that you know i will look at different features or different facets of myself and i'm like no i'm not gonna do a video this time i uh you know i'll just do the audio but god is pressing me to elevate myself and this is what the new year is all about The new year is all about elevating myself to the next level. We cannot stay a mustard seed. We cannot continue to have just the mustard seed of faith. We have to grow. We can't just be a little stubble. We cannot remain being just a little little twig. We have to grow and we have to get well-rooted so we can grow and stand tr- and stand tr- tall i'm sorry to stand tall and doing the things that god has called us to do and it's easier to stay on the boat it's easier to stay in the ship and just let the winds blow the boat the ship to and fro and you know we just hang on for dear life but sometimes jesus is calling us out of that ship and he wants us to stand firm with him so he can see us see us through the storm, not just safe on, on the boat, but also going through whatever storms or whatever facet of life we're going to go. If we think of ourselves like a frog or a toad and we are sitting on a lily pad, it's easier just to stay on that lily pad. But in order to get places, we have to jump from one lily pad to the other. We cannot stay on that same lily pad because if we're hungry or if we need a place to sleep or what have you, we can stay on the lily pad for a little while. But at some point, we got to jump to the next one to get places to go somewhere or to move ourselves maybe out of danger. And many times we find ourselves staying on that lily pad instead of jumping to the next one because we find it comfortable. We find it more suitable. But God wants to make us uncomfortable so we can know how to fight through whatever it is that we're trying to fight through. So this new year that is coming in 2023, I want to do just that. I want to step out on faith, jump out of the ship or off of that lily pad and get on the waters to walk with Christ to be better suited for whatever job that he has in store for me and for my son to do. Walking by faith and not by sight is not just a scripture 
that is in the Bible. We need to live by it. We need to stand by it. No matter what we're facing, no matter how strong the winds may be, no matter how powerful the waters may become, the fact remains is that we have to stay true to God. When we ask him to bless our lives, to do something, direct our path, he is not expecting for us to stay on the lily pad or in the ship. He's expecting us to get up and move. And in moving, he can do something. It's almost like feeding the multitude of, of men and women and children. That the five and four thousand men, not including the women and children, were fed off a little last lunch. Jesus needed a substance to bless. When he blessed the substance, he was able to feed everyone in that camp. Both the four thousand and plus women and children and the five thousand, five thousand plus women and children. However, it took faith and it took Jesus' faith to believe that he could feed all of these people. The problem is we get complacent. It's like, okay, this is what God told me to do, so I'm going to do this, but then I'm going to stay stationary. I'm not going to take it to the next level. And the next level to, for me is videos. Now, the thing that I have to work on is not only my attitude and disposition as far as confidence is concerned, but to do things according to God's will and not my will, not my way, not my thought process. I got to take him out of the picture and leave God totally and completely in control. And this is where my, a lot of hiccups come in. I'm human. I make mistakes. I blunder. But my speaking in the beginning of this podcast, it was pretty rough. And my confident level was terrible. But as God pushed me and pushed me and pushed me, he took over my speaking and allow me to build confidence in him and what I can do and not in myself. So as we are ending 2022, God placed it in my heart and he let me know, okay, it's time for you to move to the next level. You can place it now. Now it's time for me to make you uncomfortable. It's time for me to kind of push you out there because you're not going to move on your own, which I'm not. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to do that on my own. I'm going to do that only with God's help. And now that I know that this is the next facet or the next phase of my life, I need to start getting comfortable with it, no matter how uncomfortable it may be. The new year for me, is to step out of the ship. The new year for me is to jump to the next lily pad. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm not going to get anywhere staying on that ship. I'm just not. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen it's like, that's what you're afraid of, what you don't know. There is more fear in what you don't know than what you can see. See, you can be more sure of the things that you see, but the things that you don't see, that's where we have our issues and that's where we become more fearful. We often will hear this saying, Lord, or Jesus, take the wheel. But when Jesus takes the wheel and he drives on the road that we're not familiar with, we're quick to want to take the wheel back because it's like Jesus is going the wrong way. I don't know where I'm going. 
And it's all because we got comfortable doing it our way, going the path in which we are familiar with. Now, in all of this, my New Year's goals are to do more of what God asked me to do, meaning stepping out of the ship and start walking more on the waters by faith and believing that no matter what's ahead of me, I'm going to be okay. And this is what's important for all of us. It is not about, you know, knowing what's ahead of us, but knowing who is walking with us. That's what's most important. When we know who's walking with us, it doesn't matter what's in front of us. We know all good and perfect things come from God. So I'm not afraid of what's ahead of me. The only time we are afraid is because we don't know what's ahead of us. Now, okay, it's like going to a doctor. You already know your body don't feel well. You already know that your body is not where you would like for it to be. However, going to the doctor, you're afraid because you don't want to know what's wrong with you. Because if you find out what's wrong with you, then you have to face issues or facts about changes that you may have to make in your life. And if this is not changes that you want to make in your life, it's going to be a challenge. Now, if you find out you have high blood pressure or you find out that you have diabetes or find out that you have uh, some problems with your heart, of course, you're going to not be too happy to hear that news. Why? Because that introduced change in your life. That will introduce things that you have to do differently in order for you to have a long lasting productive life. If you don't change from your old ways, if you don't stop drinking, because you know that your liver is not doing well, or if you don't stop eating all the wrong foods because you know that it's affecting the diabetes, it's going to put you in an early casket. That's all it is to it. I've watched it happen. I saw it happen for myself. So it's not something that I'm just putting out there. I watched a person go through. They told them time and time again, stop smoking, stop smoking, stop smoking. They didn't want to stop smoking. They ended up with a congestional heart failure, number one. Then diabetes came into play. Then hypertension of the lungs. I know they call it something else, but I I can remember it as hypertension of the lungs, where the lungs was filling up with water or fluid. And as they tried to breathe, they could not breathe. They their oxygen level was just dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping until it finally took them out of here. They had three strikes, three strikes. Guess what? You're out. And so I know this because I watched this happen. If you don't do what doctors tell you to do, then the process of your ending is pretty much predictable if you don't make the changes that you need to make in your life. And so this is what it's all about, whether it's good changes or bad changes. If you want God to have a better or closer walk with you, you're going to have to meet him. Now, he's met you when you were struggling. He came and took you by the hand, like he came and took me by my hand to do this podcast. He took me by the hand. He said, come on, let's go. I don't want to hear it because he remind me, he he said, it's almost like, it's like talking to Moses all over again about your speaking. I'm not an eloquent speaker. He said, I don't want to hear it. Come on, let's go. He took me by my hand and here I am getting ready to go into year two with this podcast. Now I got a little comfortable behind the scenes. And he said, no, 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 no. Come on, let's go. 
It's time to pull you from behind the curtains now. You can still do audio, but you need to do some video as well. And I'm like, oh, man, God, I was really comfortable. But no, no, come on. Like, come on out of here. You got to get out of your shell. I'm trying to pull you out of your shell. And you cannot stay here. And so this is what it's all about. It's all about being obedient. And so now I'm slowly coming out of that shell, so to speak. And um, it's like, it's uncomfortable. It really is. It's very uncomfortable. But I have to be obedient at the, as well. So periodically, not only will you have audio, but you may have video as well. Uh, I won't say how many. I'm not sure. Well, however God leads me, that's the way that it's going to be. So in this new year coming up, there are going to be a lot of changes, a lot of things happening uh, for the better. I'm praying and I'm seeking God's face on that one. But in this new year, I want to have a closer relationship with God. I want to have a stronger relationship with God. I want to have a better understanding of what God is expecting from me. And in doing so, I'm hoping that you come along for the walk with me and learn as I learn, to grow as I grow, and to be closer to God as we all become closer to God together. And in this new year, I am hoping, I am praying that God bless each and every one of you to have a blessed and more prosperous new year. In order for us to get where God needs us to be, sometimes we got to step out of our comfort zone. And this is a big step. Trust me when I tell you, it's a very big step. But I hope and I pray that your year is a great year, a prosperous year, and a much closer year to have a relationship with God. Signs of the times are around. It's letting us know it's winding up. It's closing out. And we need to pay attention. We need to look towards the east. Because you know, the one day that trumpet is going to sound. And God wants us all to be ready. He said he know that everybody's not going to come. Because the gate is, is straight and it's wide. It's broad. And many are going to go down that road. But those that are walking that gate that is straight and narrow, only few will be found. Let us be a part of that few. I'd rather for it to be more fewer people than greater number of those walking down that wide path that's broad. Keep in mind that God loves each and every one of us. He welcomes everyone. But we have to follow his rules. It's not about doing what we want to do in his church. That's not how that's going to work. And when Jesus walked into that, that sanctuary and he said, this is supposed to be a house of prayer and you've turned it into the den of thieves. Jesus wasn't happy about that. And God is not going to allow those that are not following his rules in his household. He's just not going to do it. You know, it's like having a family member over that, you know, they <laughs> they come over and they come over and they try to run your household. You're not going to have that because you feel like this is where you pay your bills. This is where you sleep, you eat, you do your laundry. This is your house. No, you're not coming over here running my household. And so God is the same way. He's not going to allow Satan to come in his household running anything. Remember, the old Lucifer tried that. He tried to overthrow God on his throne. And God wasn't having it. And he's not going to have it even in today's time. God will welcome as many people that will come. But understand, he has rules and regulations that we must follow. And then following those rules and regulations, you can be blessed. But if you're not going to be following his rules and regulations, he'll lock you on the other side of the door until you get your act together. 
That's just how God works. He, he's not any different. He's not going to allow Satan to come in his home. He's all, like I said, he's already kicked out Lucifer. He's not going to play that with anybody else. So let's make this the best year ever. Let's have a better relationship with God. Let's have a closer relationship with him. And let's build our faith in him. Let's grow. But let's do it together. See, the body of Christ have to get stronger in order to fight against the wells of this of the wilds of this world and the demonic spirits of this world. Let's get the body of Christ together so we can be stronger in Christ and that we are prepared to do whatever battle we need to do for Christ. This is Kim with Standing on Solid Ground. You have yourself a wonderful, blessed day and happy new year.